zero before the country code when placing satellite calls. In the United States, Ron has artifacts and information on display from his fieldwork. <coughs> For example, from Sodom and Gomorrah is this burnt spearhead and this burnt bone. From the Red Sea crossing site is a horse's hoof and from Jerusalem are items found at the crucifixion site. We also met up with some of Ron's close associates. Oh no! Hey! <laughs> Maybe wait in the car? <laughs> right, that's right. <laughs> you wanted to know something getting over something from a few days ago. Are you videotaping this? I am, yeah. Okay, okay. good. Okay, what this is, is it's a stalactite which is approximately 11 to 12 inches long. And this was the stalactite that was hanging down in front of the chamber, or the entrance into the chamber where Ron first entered and found the Ark of the Covenant. And he broke it off, and you can see where it's broken right here. If you can get that in the, in the proper light. You can see where it's broken off. He broke that off so that the little air boy that was with him could get into the chamber. And of course, I believe later, if I remember the story correctly, he had to enlarge the hole a little bit so he could get in. But this is the stalactite from that cave. Now tell us what this is. Let me put this away. The seal stone that was in the cross hole that we believe held the cross of Christ. And they used these seal stones to plug the hole when it wasn't being used so that in between uses it wouldn't fill up with debris and everything because uh -huh. then you couldn't get anything in it. And a, and a, a 12 inch square hole would be very difficult to, to, uh, right. to dig the, the, uh, the debris and everything out. It was approximately about two, two and a half feet deep. I think it was 28 inches, something like that. Okay. Do you so know which way up it went? Was it this way up or, I believe, or this way up? I believe it was like this, and the reason I say that is because you can see uh, the seepage here. It's kind of a concretion where it was sitting like this in the moisture formed on the bottom. Okay. But that's just a speculation on my part. I believe it was that like this. Okay. And it's 12, approximately 12 inches by 13 inches. It's not quite square. It's a little bit longer this way than it is that way. And that fit securely in the hole, so that the yeah. In fact, on the uh, video, you can see it sitting in the hole. Okay. I believe in one of the video shots. So the upright beam for the cross, that's about the rough dimensions it would have been. Would have been approximately, yeah, pro probably about 12 by 12. Okay. Ron's work in Turkey led to government recognition of the site of Noah's Ark. Ron has some significant artifacts from this site. This is deck timber that was taken from near the back of Noah's Ark. Ron found this on the, uh, uh, the radar scan, and uh, they dug it up. It's been tested. It contains organic carbon, which is consistent with what you find in petrified wood. Now, one of the unique things about this, if we can get it in the light just right, this is actually a piece of deck board that's been laminated. There are three separate layers. You can see one right here. It's a larger center section, and it's a little darker in color. And then a bottom section here, three different layers. This area right here appears to be a silica replacement of, of the glue that was used to glue these boards or laminate these boards together, and some of it has seeped out the side. Now, another interesting feature of this deck board is nails, oh, okay. nail heads. Or, there's one right here. Let me get it into the light and see it a little bit better. 
and you can you can experiment with your camera angle. There's one here, uh, and there's uh, one, two, three in a row right here. Marty Plot also has a section of fossilized wood from Noah's Ark. So Ron gave you this. Yeah. And this is from Noah's Ark. It is from Noah's Ark. My shoes in the car. It's part of an old boat, probably the oldest on the planet. <laughs> Ron also has some ancient human bones of gigantic proportions. This first one is a human thumb bone. And um, it's the, been identified by radiologists as the second bone of the thumb, this, this bone right here. The Bible records that giants existed in ancient times. As you can see, it's approximately two and a half times the size of mine, which if you can extrapolate from that, this person was probably somewhere between 11 to 12 feet tall that this bone belonged to. Now, the bone of a child, the, what is it? The epiphysis. The epiphysis is still uh, visible here. Uh, that's what you find on a bone that has not completely grown, and you find this in children. And as you can see, as I hold it up here, it's just a little bit larger than mine, but mine is full grown. So this was a rather large child. Now this third specimen, unlike the other two, is petrified. And this was found near the Tower of Babel, and it is, has been identified as a human toe bone, probably from the big toe. And uh, as you can see, it's quite large. It's bigger than any toe. This would just be one of two bones in the toe, so you're talking about a toe that's probably uh, six to seven inches long. That was a big toe. That was somebody with a very big foot. <laughs> From Noah's Ark, Ron retrieved a metal alloy rivet. What this is is a, a rivet that was found in association with Noah's Ark. What's re two remarkable things is you can see the edge of the plate right here where it ends. And you can also see part of the, the head of the rivet and where, as Ron says, it was struck while it was hot and the hot metal flared out and made it larger than the hole so it wouldn't slide back through the plate. When I was over there in June of 97, Andrew Jones and I found and photographed uh, two, uh, actually a whole plate with two rivets in it that had rust stains all around them. You know, uh, We have that on both photograph and video. And these things are real, and they look very, very similar to this. Th this is a very distinct separation here. Mm -hmm. In fact, I imagine you would still see if you chip some of this matrix material off. But you see it's broken. And here's some broken pieces of it right here, see? Mm -hmm. But we won't, we won't attempt to remove those, because <laughs> they look so very fragile, so That's please don't. We were with him when we found the Josh and Oh, that's right. You were on that trip, weren't you? I had that on video at the spot. Ron had survived imprisonment and even a kidnapping at gunpoint during his explorations. But poor health finally caught up with him. Ron had planned to dive with us at the Red Sea and regretted having to cancel his trip. Uh, you know, I was sorry that I couldn't go diving with you guys because, you know, but I couldn't. And I've you know, I've learned to quit apologizing for things that are out of my control because there's obviously some reason for it. And, uh, Ron had been battling with cancer for some time. Sadly, in the early hours of the 4th of August, 1999, Ron passed away and is now resting in the Lord. But his work lives on.